All right. Previously, we have talked about the places of articulation, and we remember this chart, okay, where we talked about all these consonants and at what places they were produced. All right. Now we would be moving forward to discuss manner of articulation through which we would see how air is obstructed in our vocal tract. Okay. Previously, we were saying where. Now we are saying how the manner. Okay. So the question is. The first question we need to answer for distinguishing one consonant from other is the place of articulation. Okay, where is this, this obstruction? The second is manner of articulation. That means how the airflow is obstructed in the vocal tract. All right. In the production of consonant sounds, the airflow is interrupted, diverted, or restricted as it passes the oral cavity. Okay, so we already talked about this, that whenever we are producing consonant sounds, the airflow is interrupted or it is kind of disturbing or being disrupted or it is just diverted or restricted. Okay, it is kind of interrupted or diverted or restricted. Okay, so this is how basically consonant sounds are produced. The respective modifications modification that are made to a sound are referred as the manner of articulation. So we see how this air is obstructed that is called manner of articulation. The manner of articulation therefore describes how different speech organs are involved in producing a consonant sound. Okay, so how different speech organs are involved and how what role they are playing to obstruct the air okay that would be included in manner of articulation all right let's see the first manner is plosive or stop okay so this is this will be new words that you need to remember so first way is to stop okay like to completely stop the air in plosive the speech organs are closed okay so whatever speech organ was involved in the vocal tract it just gets closed and the oral and the nasal cavity are completely closed blocking off the air stream so in stops okay so it's very simple to understand that whenever we're talking about the sounds which are stops they completely block the air stream passage in our mouth okay so they, they just close the passage, nasal cavity, that means the cavity of nose, as well as the oral cavity, the mouth cavity, they're completely closed, blocking off the air stream. But like they completely block the air stream or the airflow. Okay, so the sounds which are produced by completely blocking the stream, okay, stops. The upbuilding pressure in the over cavity, cavity is suddenly released. But the second then all of the sudden the sound is produced and the pressure is released all right the audible puff of the air is released it is called aspiration okay so we have already talked about aspiration in our previous lecture what is aspiration okay so after plosives there is a sudden abrupt flow or the abrupt pressure that is releasing okay so that also comes with a little bit air because that is coming suddenly okay that is called aspiration Plosives in English language are p, t, k, and b, d, j. For now, you can ignore this voiced and voiceless. We will be discussing them again. Okay. So for now, you have to keep in mind p, t, k, b, d, and k. When we are pronouncing these six sounds, we would see there is a complete stoppage of sound. The hawa igdam sarukke is suddenly release hori. Okay, so when there is a stop and then release of air. Okay, for pronouncing of these sounds, those are called stops. For example, when I'm saying p, I'm closing my lips. We know p is bilabial sound. We have discussed it in the previous lecture. P. Okay, closing my lips and then opening them all of a sudden. P. So all the air is just released. So this is per sound is stop sound okay similarly for all these rest of the sounds we just stop the air at a at a place in the vocal tract then we release it all of a sudden that is called stop sound okay so all these six sounds in english these are plosives are stop sounds 
all right next is fricatives okay fricatives are created when air forces its way through a narrow gap between two articulators at a steady pace causing slight friction okay i hope you are all familiar with friction friction is a terminology that we use in physics that is when we are uh, sliding out two surfaces okay then there is a slight friction between them when we slide two surfaces then there is a friction so we see that when fricative sounds are produced okay there is a narrow gap there is not complete obstruction as we saw in plosives okay or in stops in stops we comes completely obstruct the airflow all right but in fricatives there is a narrow gap between them okay and then the articulators at a steady pace they are flow flowing out the air is coming out okay on a steady pace and then the air slides through those articulators and then it causes a little bit of friction okay that slight friction when there slight friction is produced that is called fricatives okay fricatives in english are f f okay so when we see we were producing th all right so we were putting a chunk between our teeth so in that case there is a slight narrow gap and there is a friction between the articulators between different parts of the mouth all right and then the sounds are produced similar is the case with f v z okay s sh z and y okay so in all these sounds these examples is given as well so this is f s is in thing v z as in this s as in seal sh as in shock okay this sound s z as in zero y as in may okay so all these sounds here in bold these are all fricatives in english okay now we were moving forward we have this other type that is called a fricatives like plosives there is a complete blockage of the air stream in the oral cavity so we see a fricatives are have some kind of a quality of a plosive because they completely block the air stream in the air cavity but in contrast to the plosives the blocked of air stream is not really suddenly but rather slowly causing audible friction so we see affricates are basically types of word sounds which have quality of both plosives as well as fricatives because they cause friction as in plosives we saw that there was a stoppage hawa ruk rahi thi then all of the sudden wo sari hawa release ho rahi right and in friction we saw there was a slow slow release of air in and causing friction so in affricatives there is a complete blockage then there is a slow release of air so affricatives are the sounds which have qualities of both plosives as well as fricatives okay affricatives can therefore be divided into two parts a plosive followed by a fricative as there is a closure and friction in the same place but note that affricatives are always analyzed as one phoneme okay so affricatives are basically one phoneme we would not say that they are plosives or fricative or one plosive followed by another fricative it is just one phoneme all right and the, and that is produced with both the qualities so it is a kind of a merging of both the manners of articulation plosive as well as fricative english fricatives are ch and j okay the ch sound as in cheese we already talked about that so we see there is a blockage and then the slow release of air with the friction so that is called ch ch is an affricate in english then we have j we have this j sound as in jungle it again has this quality of both there is a plosive and there is a sudden stop and then there is a slow release with slight friction that is called affricatives 
Okay, so two examples of applicatives, j and j. All right. Then we have nasals. Now by nasal, by name we see. Okay, the nasal sound. In nasal sounds, the velum, that means the soft palate, the last part of the mouth, the hanging part of the mouth, is lowered, blocking up the oral cavity. Okay, air can escape only through the nose. Okay, so as the name shows, nasal means the nose. So if the velum is blocking off the air, the air only has one other passage to come off, that is the nasal cavity. So these are the sounds which use the, which take use of nasal cavity rather than oral cavity, the mouth cavity, okay, for the production. So we have different nasal sounds in English that include ma, na, and nga. Okay, so the sounds where velum is blocking the air passage, the air is produced or coming out, comes out through the nose cavity, okay. So these are the sounds which are produced in such a way. Ma, na, and nga. As in sing. As in nga is in sing. Okay. So this is another way of manner of articulation in which the air comes from the nasal cavity. Okay. Then we have laterals. The tip of the tongue is pressed onto the alveolar ridge. So we see when we're producing laterals, the tip of the tongue, okay, the pointing edge of the tongue, it is pressed on the alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge means the behind part of teeth, okay. So our tongue is pressed at the back of our teeth. The rim of the tongue are lower so that air escapes over the lower tongue rings, okay. So let's see, it could be better clear with the example. Okay, when we pronounce L, try to pronounce L sound. Okay, so when we pronounce L, the tip of our tongue, it is touching the alveolar ridge and air escapes from the sides of the tongue. L, you okay, try to slowly pronounce L. Okay, in that case, you would see air is escaping from over the lower tongue rings. Okay, so the rims of the tongue okay are lowered that means the tip is touching the alveolar ridge the rest of the part of the tongue that is lowered okay and the air escapes over those lowered rims of tongue okay so when we say la the tip is touching the alveolar ridge and air is escaping by the sides okay so these sounds are called laterals because the air is coming or escaping over the lowered tongue rims. I hope it's clear now. Then we have approximates. The name approximates refer to the fact that the articulators involved approach each and other without actually touching. Okay, so there is no touch involved. There are three approximates in the English language. Y as in you, w as in we, r in rice. Okay, so these are basically not touching the parts of the mouth, and that's why these are called approximants. Approximants are often referred to as semi walls or glides as they represent the twilight zone between consonants and vowels. So we see when we pronounce an approximate, like these three sounds, these are not completely blocking the air, okay, and there's little obstruction, but there is slight obstruction. All right, because there's no touching involved of two parts of the mouth, that means that means they are a little bit closer to the vowels. How vowels are produced without the obstruction of air. So these approximates are kind of close to vowels, and that's why they are often called semi-vowels or glides. Okay, because these are in between zone of consonants and vowels. All right. So these are three approximates. So now we see this table as a whole. So earlier, okay, we just skipped out this part and we talked about the parts of articulation. All right. So all these consonants are distributed according to parts of articulation as well as manner of articulation.
So we see what are plosives. P, B, T, D, K, G. These are plosives, but their place of articulation is different. Okay, so when we see what is P, we would say it is a bilabial plosive sound. All right. Similarly, when we are talking about T, it is a dental plosive. All right. Let's see, sir. When I ask you what is sir, you would say it is alveolar fricative. Okay. So we distinguish all the consonants according to their place of articulation and the manner of articulation. Okay. You need to keep in mind this whole table so that you can distinguish all the sounds from one another. Okay. That's it for manner of articulation. Now here you will see how these two sounds they are both bilabial and plosive so what is the difference between p and b that is what we call is involved in voicing that would be what we learn in the next lecture okay so for now you have to remember this table according to the place of articulation and manner of articulation if you have any question you can type in the comment or you can note down for the live discussion Thank you.